Hey guys, this is Pat. And I'm Aaron. With MattKiteboarding.com, talking today about some kite material and wing materials. All right, so what do we got here, dude? I see we got five different things on your list. Yeah, so we got five different materials that kind of has become the industry standard. A bunch of, other com bunch of different companies are using them. Yeah. So we have Dacron, Penta TX or SLS, okay. Alua, Hukipa, and, and weave and now weave. as well. So everybody historically has used Dacron. Yeah, so all brands. Yeah, so Dacron's kind of been the industry standard. Yep. Um, it's a polyester um, weave with a melanine resin to kind of cure it and actually give it its strength and rigidity. That's coming in around 170, 160 grams per square meter. This is wow. depending on okay. where you're looking online. Uh, and this is just kind of all the info I could find online. Take yeah. with a grain of salt. I got some info from Kevin Wade at Elevate and Peter Stewie, <laughs> right, right. as well as the guys from the uh, Kite Surf 365 podcast, Colin and Adrian. So oh, those dude. are all a good resource. Thanks for the info. All yeah. right. So the five were Dacron, Penta TX, Alula, Hokipa, and Enweave. Everybody has historically used Dacron. So who's who's using Penta TX? Yeah. So Penta TX, um, we are seeing it in mostly Duotones kites, their SLS okay. line, okay. and then Elevate as well is using it in part of their plus series so Got they're using it. it just for their struts in those kite in that kite lineup both both brands are it struts and then the material and then the canopy material is something different okay um yeah so duotone is doing struts and leading edge with tx that sls okay lineup where um elevate is just using it in the struts they're using the hukipa material in their leading edge oh, so rad. just okay. kind of doing a little bit of mixing of both okay. materials and then Alula, uh, this was Ocean Rodeo developing this, correct? Or, yep. or, or yeah, Ocean Rodeo um, was kind of the main developer there in Alula. Um, it kind of kicked off the whole lightweight fabric yeah. material in the industry. That was the first, whoa. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I, I yeah that was the first, that. made a big difference, and everyone else has kind of hopped on that train yeah. and either developed their own version of it, yep. or not, I wouldn't say their own version of it, but their own. Sure idea of it. Yep. And so Alua kind of is coming in. It's definitely the lightest weight material per square meter that we have. Out, it's out of all of them. Out of all of them. Wow. Yeah, the first gen was around 100 grams per square meter. Now the stuff they're saying is coming in around like that 85 grams per square meter mark. Man. Um, the big difference between like That's the Alua cool. and the Penta TX and Dacron stuff is you're dealing with instead of a polyester material, it is that weave is actually a Dyneema line. Wow. Okay. So they're using okay. a loose Dyneema line. And then it is a resin with the Alua. It's a resin on the inside and outside. So they're this, sandwiching. This makes my head spin sometimes. <laughs> yeah, so they're sandwiching the, wow. that Dyneema leave with a resin that's a proprietary resin. I don't know what they call it exactly, okay. but it, it's their own thing. And that's what actually makes that the lightest weight material on the market. There's a kind of a catch-22 with it, though. It's a little bit hard for companies to work with. That's where you're not seeing yeah. a ton of kite brands hop on. Right, right. It's just hard to develop with, hard to really work with. And then plus, the other negative side of it, you're using a lot more stitching to hold that fabric oh, in sure. place. Right, right. So that's adding to the weight that you're not necessarily seeing when you're going with grams sure. per square meter. You're just going yep. with the weight of material there versus the actual finished weight. Okay. So results may vary. I don't have the exact numbers on top of my head, <laughs> right, right. but for yeah. the gram counters, for the gram which, counters, which there are. There, hey, the, the gram counters are out there. Yep. So Hukipa is yeah. next, and that was uh, yeah. Through, Hukipa um, is so it's a challenger. Starboard and Arash, correct? Yep. 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 Starboard and Arash kind of worked on that one originally with uh, cha the Challenger Factory. Yep. Developing that, um, it's coming in around 120 grams per square meter. Got it. Um, like Alua, it is a Dyneema weave fabric but it's a little bit tighter of a weave, and because of that, they're using less resin in the finishing process, so it's not a sandwich resin, resin like Alua. Okay. It's just on the inside of the material, so the Dyneema's are <laughs> <laughs> oh, My head's, yeah, I'm kind of like, wow, dude, lots of, lots of Grammy Gram techie tech. Yeah, so the Dyneema's on the outside of that fabric, so it's a little bit more abrasion resistance, yeah. or a, apparently it's a little oh, more cool. abrasion re resistance okay. than Alua. So getting that, getting that super lightweight, so uh, high tensile strength, but yet, yeah, um, a little bit, a, a little more user friendly in terms of exactly. Damage. So yeah, as far as damage, yeah. a little more user friendly. It's a little bit easier to repair with, and developing kite wise, it's a lot easier for them to work with, stitch it together, and yeah. actually develop a product around it. So it's just a little bit more end product user friendly. Okay. Yeah, and end weave is the is yeah. the last, and so end weave is coming in between Alula and Hukipa in terms of weight per square. Yep, okay, yeah, from what sweet. I can find, yeah, and, and it's coming north, in. Correct? Yep, it's yep. coming in around 102 grams per square meter. Okay. Um, that was developed by North um, Technology Group. Um, cool. So it's their own proprietary 
blend of fabrics and materials. Yep. Um, once again, they are, I believe they are using that Dyneema fabric in there with a different resin than yeah. Challenger's using the Hokipa material. So. Well, let's hit the, uh, the the bullet points here then. So yeah. Dacron is at 170 yep. grams, that's per square meter. Okay, yes. then Penta TX is 144 Four. grams per square yep. meter. Alula is 85. Uh, Hukipa is at 120 grams per square meter and Enweave at 102 grams per square meter. Okay, so the heaviest is Dacron and the lightest is Alula. Yep, All and right. if you want to break it down differently, you're looking at Penta TX is 20% lighter than traditional Dacron. Yep. Then you got Hukipa coming at 30% lighter weight. Um, and Weave's at 40% lighter weight, and then Alula's yeah. coming at 50% lighter weight. So. Now you've flown kites and or wings um, with all these materials. Yes. What are you noticing? Like what, what stands out? What's it worth to the end user? You know, because when I see this, I absolutely appreciate it. And I, I'm one that doesn't necessarily like to overly get tech mm -hmm. on material, but I surely appreciate the benefit when I'm riding. And the first one was that I ever experienced was SLS from Duotone and the Penta TX. And yeah. I know that's only one step up from, from their, you know, a more traditional Dacron um, build process, but I really appreciated. I didn't care about the weight savings. I just realized that the kite responded in a much faster way. And yeah. I liked that. I was like, okay, this, you know, same size kite was getting a lot more, uh, I was getting a lot more quick response at the bar yeah. uh, on that. And, and I haven't, I got to call myself out here. I have not flown anything with Alula uh, or used wings with Hokipa or Enweave. So I am, I'm really uh, a bit uneducated on that. I know there's there's benefit there, yeah. um, but I definitely, um, you know, there's a lot of, of information to take in. And it's, <laughs> yeah. it seems like the brands have really, you know, reached out to try to find different ways to make their products better. And um, so I guess to the to the end user, you know, what's the benefit of some of these different materials? And then the cost effect too, obviously, because the, the lighter yeah. weight we get, the more cost we incur. Yeah, that's kind um, of the catch 22 of everything is. Yeah the kind of return and value of yep. what you're getting out of the more expensive materials. So I as guess. the end user, you kind of have to decide, you know, what you want to, you know, the, the, the cost benefit, you know, what are you looking for performance wise and how much are you willing to spend above traditional Dacron yep. uh, to get that? Okay. Yeah. So, I mean, with all these newer fabrics, you are getting a stiffer platform as mm -hmm. well as a weight reduction. Yeah. So, Stiffness is a kind of a catch-22. You don't want a kite overly stiff because there sure. is, when you're flying a kite, that yeah, twist nice to have a little is flex. good. It, yep. it is. It helps with the kite turning, so yeah. it helps with all that. Um, yeah. So it's kind of a catch-22. I think you're going to start seeing companies kind of blend right, materials right. a little more. Like, oh, maybe we're going to have like a section of that leading edge, a lure, yeah. or a section of a hookipa, and then kind of going more towards the wingtips, you're going to see yep. Dacron kind of make its way back in there to get that flex pattern sure. kind of dialed in a little more. So that could be something we see coming down the pipeline. Um, but yeah, so I mean, that is kind of the benefit of <laughs> this. So, this is so in-depth. I can't even imagine, you know, obviously the the, the, the processes of manufacturing, all five of the, these different materials are, are different. The cost to implement. Yeah. Um, do you do you notice uh, aside from rigidity on the uh, the leading edge and the struts? Do you notice a big difference with the overall weight of the kite being a factor for our customers? You know, is that something that people are overly concerned with? So, it depends on what the customer is looking for, I guess. Yeah. So, like if you're looking for that light wind foil like foiling, kite, yep, yep, you're it, looking for the it. lightest thing you can to yeah. keep it in the air in the least amount of wind possible. And I have seen. And, and talk to different, you know, we customers on the beach here with um, the Ocean Rodeo, it was at the Rome. It was the Rome, yeah. Uh, Alula. Uh, what size? I'm trying to think. I've seen people the up 10 meter is kind of that magic bolt for a lot of the guys in the shop. Yeah. You're like, I, f I fly a 10 meter Rome. And it'll it's just a three hang strut. There. It'll hang there in very six light to eight knots, and it sits up there. Yeah. I mean, you definitely got to work it to get it going, but sure. not many kites will sit up. And it's kind of baffling because it's almost, they almost sit up there like a foil kite will, you know, in, in the just yeah. extreme light winds, all, almost like a, like a peak four or something that, that'll just float up there in nothing to, to see uh, an, an LEI kite, uh, an inflatable kite yeah. do that um, in the similar kind of a way. I mean, still a foil kite's going to have that, that, you know, the last word, but I feel like yeah. it's pretty darn impressive to see what uh, an inflatable kite can do with a Lula material. I, yeah, I was it's... really blown away at that. It's crazy how far like the, these materials have come and what's been 
probably three years now in yeah. development as far as like yeah, when they first hit the market. It hasn't been that long. Right. And it really is kind of the newest thing in kite design. It's the newest, it's the biggest change you're seeing in the yeah. industry as far as yep. groundbreaking stuff goes. You're not seeing a ton of, oh, it's like the next kite out. It's like sure. the craziest thing to come out. It's, oh, they're integrating this material into yeah. it now. Or, well, and it makes sense, you know, because we've got, you know, over the years that, that kiteboarding kites have been on the market, it's still been a leading edge tube kite, you know, with, yeah. with struts and a leading edge. Um, obviously, we shape the wings differently for different effect and we, you know, low and high aspect and all that stuff. But yep. this is this is really cool to see uh, some new options yes. uh, come down the line that, that are beneficial, not just hype for the sake of selling kites, but there is actually a very... Uh, legitimate um, end user benefit to some of these lightweight materials in, in the performance side. For me, I'm not a person that's counting grams per se no. that really cares about the light wind, but I can see that the guy who's foiling, the person who's foiling, um, can really benefit from you know the Alula material um, because that works. Like that's definitely functional. And if, if, if you don't want to get mm -hmm. into a foil kite, you can go Alula uh, yeah. like in some of the ocean rodeo kites and just it's it's really cool what yeah. can be done there. And yeah, and I'm not the guy who's gonna go out and count but go away my kite and wait against this other twelve meter yeah. seat. But some of you I, are out there. I know, <laughs> I've talked to you. <laughs> but I do I do notice when I have oh so they say a ten meter roam stacked up with an older Yeah. Whatever, let's say an old Neo or whatever. It's a traditional Dacron Neo. Yep. Flying those and trying to foil with them, yeah. that's when you notice the difference. Totally. That's when I pick it up and I see like, oh, this actually mm -hmm. makes a difference. Yes. All right, guys, you, you heard it here. This is Pat and Aaron uh, talking about the different materials that, that you can uh, get your kite manufactured with. If you have any questions about that, call this guy. Call him <laughs> ask for Pat, because I will be like a deer in headlights if you start tacking out on me with these questions. This is pretty cool, man. I, I appreciate uh, all the, I know you did a lot of research and digging on, on all the different materials that are available. It's very beneficial to um, be able to explain it to our customers. So I, thanks, dude. Thanks yeah. for digging into that. Um, Sounds like Birdie scratching at the door <laughs> looking for a dog treat there. Yeah, no, it was fun to dig into all of it. Definitely, um, there's some conflicting numbers out there online. Yeah. I just kind of did the best I could to get the average of them. Yep. yep. Um, yeah, talked to as many people as I could in the design aspect of things. And I think we're going to get a couple of videos down the road here going with some interviews with some of the actual designers at companies. Oh, sweet. Um, sweet. So yeah, if you guys have any questions, let yes. us know in the comment section yep. down below. If you have anything you might want to ask any of those guys, we can post up there and see if we can get some questions going for some designers. Absolutely. Guys, hey, thanks. Uh, Pat, thank you for taking the time. I appreciate no it, buddy. Thank you very much. Guys, we'll hope to see you on the water. See you out there, guys.